Well, let's keep going with more examples of uh, function problems, and and hopefully, as we keep doing this, you're gonna you're gonna get the idea of how all this stuff works. So let's uh, let's do another problem. I'm gonna use green this time, and let me clear everything. So I'll show you. Uh, I showed you there one you could define a function is just kind of a, a a standard algebraic expression. You could also do it kind of you know if number is odd, this is what you do. If a number is this, this is what you do. Um, you could also define a function visually. Uh, let's let's say, let me draw a graph, and I'll use a line tool, so it's a reasonably neat graph. That's the x-axis. Oh, there. Oh, that's pretty good. And let's draw the f of x axis or I mean you might be used to calling that the y axis but it's okay oh oh I I almost had it vertical but let's see let's draw a few slashes here and a couple of here like this mm -hmm. sorry for getting bored while I draw this graph I should really have some type of tool so that the graphs just show up but let me draw a let's say that let me draw this function. So this is what this is. One, two, three, four, five. This is negative five. This is five. This is five. This is negative five. And this is x axis. That's the x axis. And this is we'll call this the f of x axis. Now that might not seem obvious to you uh, at first, but all this is saying is Let's say when x is equal to negative five, this function I'm I'm creating a function definition. Uh, let's say it equals two. That's negative one. And it stays the same. Stays the same. And then it goes up to here. And then it goes to here. To here. And then See, I hope I'm not boring you. And it just keeps moving up. Let me see what would this would look like. This would look like this. So if I, you might think I'm doing something very strange right now, but I, just bear with me while I draw this. And I hope I don't mess up too much. And then say it went like that. Say it went like that. So you might say, Sal, this is a very strange looking graph, and it is. But what this is is this is a function definition. This tells you whenever I input an x, at least uh, for the x's that we can see on the graph, it, it, this, this graph tells me what f of x equals. So if x is equal to negative 5, f of x would equal plus 2, right? And we could draw a couple of examples. f of, f of 0, well, we go to 0 on the x-axis, and we say f of 0 is equal to 0. f of 1 is equal to, well, we go to x equal to 1, and we just see where the chart is. Well, it equals negative 1, right? I think you get the idea. This isn't uh, too difficult, but this is a function definition. So this is, so we've defined this, this graph right here is f of x, right? So if, if that gra that's the graph of f of x, and let's say that we define g of x, g of x is equal to f of x, let's say it's equal to f of x squared minus f of x. And let's say that h of x is equal to, let's say that equals to, let's say it equals 3 minus x. So what if I were to ask you, what is h of g of negative let's say, of negative 1. So just like we did in the previous problems, first we'll say, well, let's try to figure out what g of negative 1 is, and then we can substitute that into h of x. So g of negative 1. So g of negative 1 is equal to, and, and this is how I do it. Uh, it's, it. There's no trick to it. You just Wherever you see the x, you just substitute it with the number that you're saying is now the value for x. So you say, well, that's equal to f of negative 1 squared minus f of negative 1. Right? All I did is I said g of negative 1, I just substituted it right wherever I saw an x. Well, what's f of negative 1? Well, when x is equal to negative 1, 
f of x is equal to 1. So f of negative 1, let's write that, f of negative 1 is equal to 1. So g of negative 1 is equal to, well, that's just 1 squared minus 1. Well, that equals 0, right? Because f of negative 1 is 1, so it's 1 squared minus 1. That equals 1 minus 1 is 0. So g of negative 1 is 0. So this is the same thing as h of 0, right? Because g of negative 1, we just figured out is 0. h of 0, we just take that 0 and substitute it here. So it's 3 minus 0, so that just equals 3. And we solve the problem. Let's do another example. And I don't want to erase my graph since I took four minutes to actually draw it. Let me erase what we just did here. And what you might want to do after you watch it uh, the first time, and this isn't true just of this video, actually, of all the videos, but especially on the functions, after watching it once, you might want to rewatch it and pause it right after I give you the problem and try to do it yourself and then see. And if you get stuck, you can play it. Or if you get an answer, just uh, you can play the video and make sure that we did it the same way. Let's see. Let's say I'm going to create another definition for g of x this time. Let's say that g of x, oh, whoops, I was trying to write in black. Let's say that g of x is equal to f of x squared is equal to f of x squared plus f of x plus 2. Right? So now, in this case, what is g of, let's pick a random number. What is g of minus, no, let's, let's pick a, let's say, what is g of minus 2? I have to make sure I pick a number that we can find the actual solution for. Well, g of minus 2, wherever we see the x, x is not going to be minus 2. That is equal to f of minus 2 squared plus f of minus 2 plus 2, right? All we did is wherever we saw an x, we substituted minus 2 there. And let's simplify that. Well, f of minus 2 squared, we know what minus 2 squared is. That's the same thing as f of 4 plus f of minus 2 plus 2. That's 0 plus f of 0. And now we just have to figure out what f of 4 and f of 0 is. Well, f of 4, we go where x equals 4 is right here. And when, f, when x equals 4, f of 4 is equal to 2. So this is equal to 2 plus f of 0. Well, and, and just as a reminder, this is the definition of f. We didn't define it in terms of a, a, a function, of, in terms of an algebraic expression. We defined it in terms of an actual visual graph. So what's f of 0? f of 0 is 0. When x is equal to 0, f of 0 is 0. So it's 2 plus 0. So g of negative 2 is equal to 2. An interesting thing, you might want to make problems like this for yourself and, and keep experimenting with different types of functions. And a very interesting thing would actually be to graph g of x. And actually, that, that, that's a good idea, I think. I think maybe we'll do that in a, in a future modules to kind of play with functions and then actually to try to graph the functions and see how they turn out. Um, I will. Uh, I don't know if I have enough time. Actually, I'm going to wait until the next lecture to do a couple of more examples. I want to do as many examples though, on the functions as I can with you, because I think as you keep watching and watching the function problems and um, and seeing more and more variations on functions, you'll see both how general of a concept this is, and hopefully you'll get an idea of how this uh, the functions actually work. Um, well, I'll see you in the next lecture. Have fun.